arguably the most undetected, unsuspected, and neglected behavior banes of human civilization, second only to pedophilia. Though the deplorable concept of the sexual desire for children is more familiar to the general public than the practice I would like to finally begin to uncover today. One of society's most hidden humdrums, a closely guarded open secret that the commoner either knows all about or knows absolutely zilch about. A practice of belief so diabolical and malevolent, its very function and the plausible deniability of it has been in operation for nearly as long as man has been in the earth. In recent years, roughly the last decade, the knowledge and information of Narcissistic personality disorder and the covert malignant abuse that uh, it entails has become such an open topic of discussion that it's more difficult to not encounter the conversation on or offline, whether you want to or not, right? But since this is the age of information, technology, and digitized interaction, there is also vast increase in the mainstreams embracing promotion and celebration of witchcraft, whereas it's the more settling norm to introduce and indoctrinate preschoolers into it even, disguised as an innocent penchant of the human experience, six to 60-year-old men and women are subliminally, subtly, and even directly propagandized and programmed and conditioned to accept and engage in, tra- in traditions and practices despite being forbidden in the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, as detestable abominations. Adults in their early to mid-40s still healing from childhood traumatic events and Americans alone have spent over $225 billion a year on psychiatry, psychology, psychotherapy, and medications. I being one of them, if I'm being transparent. Having uncovered nearly every trauma known to man, except one. This just one in particular simply refuses to rear its ugly head. Well, today is the day. It is my hope and goal that after this discussion, free of charge, we're going to open the can of worms that will get to the root of the many CTE and CPTSD that we all are undergoing. I present to you structural abuse. Structural abuse, also known as societal abuse, is a practice that is frankly demonic in nature it is a spiritual war according to Ephesians 6:12 uh, that we war not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers thrones dominions rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, that's five levels, people, okay? Um, and six, seven, there's, there's, there's many levels and layers to this, okay? Um, but 
Let's keep it on the cuff. Though the Bible doesn't specifically address structural or societal abuse, uh, there are many instances of it, okay? As in Israel being enslaved in the captivity of Egypt for 400 years. Um, now, this was as punishment for their disobedience and defiance and rebellion of the Most High God, you know, the God of Israel. Um, now, in the first chapter, in the book of Exodus, uh, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, he orders Hebrew women who serve as midwives to uh, expecting the Hebrew slaves uh, to watch them as they gave birth. And uh, they were ordered to kill the male infants at birth. Uh, when a child came out, if it was a male, the, uh, the midwives were to kill him. Hebrew women told to kill other children of other Hebrew women. The Hebrew women. Okay. But... Uh, they were to let the females live. Um, the midwives disobeyed glory to the Lord out of fear of the Lord. Um, now, yeah, Pharaoh you know, gets all upset. and Why have you done this? And they're like, uh, you know, the Hebrew women were like, well, I mean, these, these Hebrew women are not, not like other women. You know, they give birth kind of fast. Like, we don't get there in time, you know. A nice little slip away and everything, you know. Um, which the Lord blessed them because of their fear of the Lord. And uh, not, uh, you know, doing what the Pharaoh um, ordered them to do, you know. And they even had children of their own, you know. Obedience is a beautiful thing. Um, but yet, Pharaoh, in his callous disregard for life, still orders every newborn Hebrew boy to be thrown into the Nile River. This is Exodus uh, chapter 1, verses 8 through 22. Now, as there are numerous other accounts of abuse all throughout the Bible, as well as repeated warnings against abusive or oppressive behavior, such as Exodus uh, chapter 22 and verse 22, Isaiah 10 and verse 2, First Thessalonians 4 and verse 6, um, and direct stern warning against abuse of children in Mark chapter 10, verses 14 through 16. Um, but I would like to focus solely on a sickening, sinister, far too long practice that has been habitually performed for centuries and uh, has just went unhindered Let's just evidently it's so strategically sophisticated it seems to be all but non-existent in the minds of the developed world all across the board or so it appears see folks this is ritualistic in nature and it's not as privy to common knowledge of the uh, public as say the you know, biblical sacrifice of of live infant children thousands of years ago to, you know, demon worship of Molech or Baal or, or the modern version of it now um, in the form of abortion, uh, you know, Planned Parenthood, um, which, by the way, couldn't be more ironic or oxymoronic, right? But structural abuse is the most overlooked, unnoticed, and unaddressed arm of witchcraft that the Most High mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Namely, divination or fortune telling, acting as a sorcerer, wizard, casting spells, charms, being a witch, necromancy, consulting the dead, which in reality is communication with, dem with demons, 
who are spirits who once walked the earth but were now disembodied, but we'll get to that shortly. Now, this practice, societal or structural abuse, can safely be categorized as a favorite activity of all of the above. Those who practice these dark arts and are of the darkness, they know exactly what they're doing. And they are in direct and willful collusion with the true enemy of our souls, who is the spirit. Okay. Um, now, over the last 60 to 75 years, especially with the invention of the television, television, we have been exposed to structural abuse, but we were simply oblivious to what it actually was. Now, let me point out that there is a stark contrast to structural abuse and structured violence. Uh, With the latter being what we are more familiar with. Structural violence is manifested in a more obtuse fashion with such injustices as racism and classism. Though it's safe to presume that racism is a byproduct of classism as it is the belief of a people, group, or a person's value and worth being based solely on their material wealth or possessions, um, collectively or individually. And there's been a plethora of conditioning of the hearts and minds of America and abroad to subscribe to one's worth and value having a price tag. But I digress. With images, newspaper, Headlines and magazine covers, articles, columns, and essays bombarding the public eye and ear of the murder, terrorism, disenfranchisement of people of color, regardless of economic status. As it turns out, was merely, uh, uh, well, classism, as it turns out, was merely a scapegoat, a, a catalyst, if you will. It was a patsy, the fall guy to, perp- to perpetuate. A uh, far more deeper and darker systemic culture. I say culture with my chest. Okay. Right, right, right. Well, while structural violence lays claim to economic status or ethnicity, structural abuse is a systemic process and operation that deals with individuals unfairly. And unjustly by a system that causes the nearly impossible challenges to protect themselves against, mobilize against, to manage, to break out of, to seek justice, and to redress for that which is arduously difficult to avoid, reverse, or change. Um, In other words, uh, uh, life is made uh, extremely difficult um, almost like a no-win situation for, for for just about anyone that the hidden hand chooses, you know. Um, just, uh, I mean, just take, just strip everything from them, from reputation to dignity to career to to hobbies to social life to friends to text messages to uh, to being ignored in public. I mean, seriously, like someone that you've known for 30 years, you walk past in the family dollar, you speak to them, and they literally ignore your existence. Like, they act as if you, you were never born, and they never know you. It's, it's awful, right? Um, now it is said that this uh, systematic oppression is not endorsed by the broader society, though I beg to differ. It is my contention that it has been enabled through generations of corruption, bias, nepotism, and partiality of fraternal orders and secret societies that have kept their modus operandi of corporate, cultural, and social constructs within the confines of their sworn oaths and agendas attended only for their own benefit. Now, the book of Hosea, uh, chapter 4 and verse 6, say, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, uh, but that's, it's largely quoted, but not in its entirety. The Most High goes on to say, There is a lack of knowledge because it was rejected. Okay, now there's a difference, you know what I mean? Jesus isn't telling us 
that we can't obtain the knowledge or the understanding. He is telling us we refuse to take the instruction and correction. Because knowledge is rejected, those who refuse knowledge, instruction, and wisdom are choosing to be destroyed. What we call the powers that be, or what the Bible calls the kings of the earth, do not have some out of reach, unattainable knowledge that the everyday people cannot ever access. They just had the desire and discipline to obtain it. What they chose to do with the knowledge gained was for the loss of everyone else, unfortunately, but is a segue for us obtaining the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for the betterment and benefit for our fellow man. And and this is not far-fetched or fantasy, ladies and gentlemen. This can be done. In fact, there is dire need for it to be done. So some things can be undone. That which can be, at least. Lord willing. Now, time to get real. Really real. Might as well get comfortable with being uncomfortable. This isn't an easy conversation. And possibly may run risk of cognitive dissonance or flat out blood boiling anger. That's okay. I'm with you. I'm right here beside you for the long ride, the long way, Lord willing. Holy Spirit, help me and guide me through this by your grace and strength. In Jesus' name. Okay. CTEs. Childhood traumatic events. Many times was grooming for the structural abuse that was to come. Since online forums, message boards, and social media groups are clamored with people tossing around terms like gaslighting, devaluing, discarding, triangulation, like frisbees, I'm making the bold claim right here and now. You were either structurally abused or you were in cahoots with those who structurally abuse. It is my deep, sincere hope you are the former in the group with me, and graciously, chances are you belong to my group. The recipients, I do not claim victimhood, nor do I encourage any of you to either. We are not victims, okay? We were victimized, but we are not victims. They want us to see ourselves as victims so we can become like them. Victimizers. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, thanks. We are victors. Soldiers. Albeit wounded. But if you are under the sound of my voice, praise God, you survived. You are a survivor. We just now must come to fully realize and comprehend just what we survived. Out of sincerity and concern for my brothers and sisters, I must tell you the truth. It was meant to kill you. Thank Jesus that we have his blood and we have his redemption. But this treatment was meant to kill you. It could have. It nearly did. Some didn't make it here to discovery. Recovery and healing. I was nearly one of them. It's only by the grace of God and the love and forgiveness of Christ I'm able to share this experience and interaction with you. As a matter of fact, he actually told me, if you knew just how much danger and harm I shielded you from, I'd get more praise out of you. <sighs> but, my Lord. So here I am. I'm Christopher. And I've been subjected to structural abuse, societal abuse, since early childhood. Endured every form of abuse there is. Sexual, mental, emotional, psychological, professional, romantic, platonic, spiritual, and physical. I will be the first to admit to making unwise choices and engaging in unbecoming lifestyles. Alcoholism, substance abuse that resulted in 
arrested development and underachievement. While there is concrete validity to the interference of the societal subjugation, sabotage, and hindrance, I still must take responsibility for my actions or lack thereof. When you're grown up, you own up. To make changes, you can't make excuses. I want the results. Now, abuse is abuse. And abuse speaks more of the abuser than it does the abused. But abuse is abuse. And there are explanations, but there is no excuse. All right, so before I hand the floor over, I want to ask you how many of you just seem to never catch a break in nearly ever endeavor you took on. You scored highest on the test. You qualify for the job. You get the position just to be told that you weren't a good fit for it. You played the game by the rules for the most part, making mistakes along the way. You follow the format just to have a voicemail of a monotone denial. You were excluded from everything that everyone else was permitted to. Invited to parties that you weren't welcome to. You order from the menu at the local deli and the order was always wrong, no matter who the server was. You could have went to high school with them. Know your nickname, know your birthday. But your order's never right. Like, it's just, it's never how you asked. And you're perceived as dumb, though you're considered smart. If you think back, like, 10, 15, 25 years, you were told things about yourself by others that didn't register, much to their awareness and amusement. Now, of course, everyone has rough patches, bumps, and potholes in the roads of their journey, and your share was no exception. Though it may have, at times, made you think that something didn't go wrong, it wouldn't go at all. Like, feels like that almost had it, or just about syndrome, you know. Oh, man, I almost had it. I was just about in there, you know. Uh, an opportunity presents itself, and, and then poof, it just vanishes. Someone comes along with a helping hand, you know, and then they up and disappear without a trace. Uh, there's two gas heaters in mint condition on your porch that you need to sell, and people who need them and want them, you know, uh, ask you what you want for it, and they refuse your asking price. You're asking $75. And then they head straight to Ace. Purchase the same exact one. You haven't... Didn't come and tell you that they paid $300 for it. On sale. But wanted to give you $20. You know? Asked to borrow items that never returned. Seduced into sex. And treated like a whore or whoremonger. Like a piece of meat. You're only asked to give something, never offered to be given anything, never invited to trips, vacations, ball games, fishing, but asked to facilitate it in some kind of fashion. Or you're just not told about it at all. You're just kept out of the loop. You're exiled, you know. And then people talk about you, at you, around you, never to you. You were being structurally abused. Then you're blindsided by the love bombing of the covert malignant narcissist, a.k.a. the Jezebel spirit, high-ranking demon. And you are, uh, it. well, yeah, the unfortunate empath is totally oblivious to this dynamic of sociopathy and psych. Psychopathy. Now your life is about to be put through the fire's refiner. It will be turned upside down on your ear, proverbially stripped, stark naked as a jaybird at whistling time in front of the entire world. 
publicly humiliated, shamed, made a mockery of in front of the entire world. Uh, There are three kinds of structural abuse. Imposed interference with an individual's personal space, time, and energy control. Okay, and there's normal interferences with one's ability to control relationships and the construction of them. And there's missing connections that harness physical, mental, and emotional energies of a person over a a protracted period causing damage to the physical and the emotional well-being of the person kept waiting. So in other words, this is like, um, uh, I believe one society, uh, the, uh, the, the servants of Satan and the serpent seed who get the little, uh, 15 minutes of fame, they, they call it, uh, the white glove treatment. It's like, like stripping you bare and, um, of all dignity, pride of any, any uselessness or worth or any value or any, uh, any asset of any kind in their eyes or in their, you know, uh, construct. Um, and it's quite horrendous, you know, to be honest, um, I've had, um, a couple of real buddies, you know, who, who actually knew what was going on. And like, even as they, you know, learn, because a lot of people, sometimes they will come and uh, test you, like they test your knowledge, like they, they want to know if you know what's going on, how much do you know, uh, what do you know about what you don't know about, what are you up on, what are you still blind to, what are you aware of, what are you not aware of, um, are, are you fortifying any boundaries, are you making any changes, any strengthenings in, in any areas of your life, are you actually being counteractive or, or productive, um, you know, with a diligent apprehension to, uh, you know, st- strengthen your, your, your castle, if you will. Um, but they will always act like they don't know what's going on. Like no one will ever, ever tell you the truth ever. And I mean, ever. And if you are told the truth, it will not be told with words. It's like, one of those, uh, kind of like, you know, uh, uh, most communication is like 70%. Well, yeah, 70% of a communication is nonverbal. So, uh, if, if, if someone who you really made a connection with, like leaves your life, you know, um, abruptly and you never hear from them again, that, you know, uh, the other 30%, um you can you you can chuck it in the bucket of of uh, assumption you know that uh they they wanted to tell you but they couldn't you know because they were you know told uh, well you know you're either with us or you're against us you know now do you want your life to be like his you want your life to be like hers because if we can make it happen buddy if you ain't got no jelly donuts, I'm gonna to have to gaffle you. Yeah. Um, but um, it's kind of horrendous, you know. Um, and I will humbly admit to, uh, you know, um, allowing, you know, embarrassingly enough, um, for my family's um, legacy to be tainted by. Uh, foolishness and, 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 and petty crime. And like, I should have known better. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, it's, it's, it's bad enough knowing like what happened and like having to go through it for like majority of your life. But then like, 
to own up to it like you're in the mirror and like regardless of what happened like you're responsible for like a lot of it happening and you know what I mean like you you made decisions and choices that were made for you but you still made them so like you're still responsible for them and for what you're responsible for you're accountable to you know so, like, I can just own up, you know. Um, it's, you know, something that I regret, you know. Um, looking back, you know, I shamed my family. Um, I do have the consolation, praise the good Lord, um, of my family seeing me uh, actually not just talking it but walking it, started making changes in my life. Turned my life around, started getting my head together, started creating better habits, more healthy coping mechanisms, and 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 really getting into scripture and applying it to my life and growing in my prayer life and 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 my relationship, you know, my personal relationship with the Creator, you know, with Christ Jesus, you know, Heavenly Father and my Savior, you know, uh, you know. Uh, I have my stumbles, you know what I'm saying? I still have my stumbles, you know what I'm saying? I struggle, you know. Um, I'm not going to act like like the faith walk is a cakewalk, you know, but I actually, just, you know, do put effort into trying to, you know what I'm saying, like, like, like be a good and faithful servant, you know what I mean, uh, of the Most High God, you know. And um, one of the roles of my job description is warrior, you know, I am a warrior in the kingdom of heaven. I'm not, I'm not a chump. I'm a warrior. Uh, uh, and the father sent his warriors down here, you know, um, in love. You know, because my Abba is love. And I was made by love, for love, in love, to love, to be love, for love. And love never fails. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. Love always trusts. There is nothing greater than love. And I mean nothing. And God is love. There is no one above him. There is no one beside him. There is no one with him. There is no one after him. Jesus is Lord. There is one God. One faith. One baptism. Okay, in Jesus' name, and these cats are going to get their due. He's going to get their due. That's it, you know. Uh, you know. Now that's not His will that anyone shall perish, but that all come to to repentance and and salvation in Christ Jesus. But you know, He created the wicked for you know the day of judgment. The day of doom, you know, and I have to admit to wickedness like Jesus went to the cross for me. Jesus ain't do none of what I've done. Nothing. Nothing. You know, um, so while the father sends me here for his own purpose, he creates me for his own purpose. The enemy has got other plans and and is going to form weapons against my life. But uh, according to Isaiah 54 and verse 17, no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper, and any tongue that is lifted up in judgment shall be condemned. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the vindication is of me, saith the Lord. Okay, now, uh, as I close, structural abuse is cowardly. It's bustified, you know. It's indirect. It's, it's always indirect. It's side. It's sideways. It's just like a sidewinder. It's always indirect. It's like it's so. And well, anyway, uh, it exploits the victim on every metaphysical level of our being. Okay, and there are four permanent impacts upon the individuals subjected to it. Now, there are, you know, different responses 
different reactions. People uh, have 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 higher levels of cognitive dissonance. Some are heavier. Some are lighter. Some don't have much at all. Some just accept it and they make changes. You know what I'm saying? You know, and some others go through just turmoil. Just like just just almost having your head explode. But there are four main permanent impacts upon individuals who are subjected, especially over a prolonged amount of time, to structural societal abuse. And this is uh, one, cognitive abuse by which the meaning of the world is forever changed. Two, sexual abuse that changes the person's identity or sense of identity for life. Three, emotional abuse, impairing the capability to function in a realistic and human manner with your neighbor and your peers and your family and whatnot. And then lastly, physical abuse that is imposed by the cultural and social corporate dominance of those who are, who, who are in control, who abuse their power, you know, um, and the main objective of structural abuse is manipulation, intimidation, and domination, which is the whole, the actual core uh, state. It's the core uh, movement. or It's the core of witchcraft. Manipulation, intimidation, and domination. As therapy is sought for healing, release, clarity, Resolve, etc. You find that the gaslighting continues and the ab- uh, abuse is just perpetuated, being that they are far more aware of who you are than not. But the truth can never be told because the entire lie crumbles if it's ever told. No one is going to admit to being the prettiest, most attractive, hideous, insidious beast walking the earth. But we are told to pray for them, you know, um, according to Matthew 6 and 44. We're told to love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, bless those who curse us, you know, pray for those who spitefully and use us and persecute us, and, you know, and that's not easy, man. That that's not easy, you know. When he told us to 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 give someone the other cheek if they strike one, like I mean, he wasn't telling us to be pushovers. He was just saying like like act how I would act, you know. Um, anybody can do that, like, but n- not everyone can have class, you know, and. I've said it before, and I will say it again. Like, you have reached a level of maturity when you no longer respond to what you once reacted to, and I believe that that growth is found in in spending time with the Lord in prayer, in, in his in His Word, in fellowshipping with Him, and not only talking to Him but listening. You know, um, dying to self daily, you know, have like, you know, seeking that discipline that I myself, you know, can admit to I've always lacked. I was, I, you know, like he's, he's taught me, almost had to give me the crash course, you know. Now he did say in Joel 2 and 25 that he would restore the years that the palm were of the canker worm and the locust have eaten, you know. And that was partly due, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, you gotta admit it, man. It's our disobedience, but his faithfulness, man. Because First John one and, and and verse nine tells us that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Like Holy Spirit really is our friend, you know, and um, he went through this with us, y'all. Okay, be encouraged, you know. Um, I know, like, we tend to still call ourselves T.I.s and all of that, but, like, j- just know that on paper, how they refer to us is E.I.s, man. 
empowered individuals. We started calling ourselves targeted individuals so we can remain as we speak. Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If we keep telling ourselves that we're being gaslighted, then we're going to be gaslighted. If we keep telling ourselves that we're targeted individuals, then we're going to be targeted. And we're going to always, you know, believe that we're gang being gang stalked 24-7. Which, I mean, it's more, more than likely true. Like, you know, I mean, there's a 98.79% chance that everything is 24-hour digitally, fiber-optically, and biometrically surveilled, like that's that's no secret at this point. I mean, seriously, like like Masons wrote books about it fifty, sixty, seventy years ago. Like telling you, know, you know, it's all good. You know what I mean? Because the technology belongs to the Lord too. Everything, everything is the Father's. Everything, the earth and its fullness thereof belongs to the Lord. Period. Period. It's just that simple. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He is love. He is light. There is no darkness in him at all. He is good. He is faithful. He is merciful. Slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiveness, long suffering. There is joy where the spirit of the Lord and there is liberty. But I want darkness and torture for her. He created me to be me. Not to want to be him, you know, now, I was created to be conformed to the likeness of Christ, you know, he gave me a name, well, something like his, you know, and he, he's going to give me a new name that only I know, you know, but he still created me to be me in cooperation with him, I get to be me, and you get to be you. And you don't have to be punished for it. I love you. I don't love you because you love me. I love you because I love you. You don't have to love me for me to love you. That's what love is about. Love is a choice. We choose how we treat people. We choose to love. We choose to hate. We choose to tear other people down. We choose to lift other people up. We choose to help. We choose to harm. It is just that simple. He gave us free will. And this is our dominion. And it is high tide that we get to stomping on serpents' heads. I don't know about y'all. But in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, let's get to crushing some serpents' heads, man. To the glory of God and the advancement of the kingdom of light. Y'all can't think that this going on forever is is remotely desirable. I mean, you know, like the Lord in his wisdom and understanding, he he knows exactly what he's doing and he's training us up and he could be trusted. I mean, he's proven himself trustworthy, you know, and you know, um he gave us the power to choose salvation. So if we can so like if if we have the power to choose to cooperate with him, then we have the power to put on the full armor of God, according to Ephesians six, and dwell in the safety and the habitation of the Almighty and dwell safely under the wings of the Most High. In Yahushua's name, in Jesus' name, changed, transformed, washed by the word, the water, the pure living water. You know what I mean? Under the blood of Yeshua. 